All right, all right. Welcome to Savvy Sabs Podcast. I'm your host, Sabrina Salvati. I have Scott here with me tonight. He is a healthcare activist with Red Berets. Scott, welcome back. Thank you so much for having me on again. You know I love you. I love your show. Oh, my God. I'm smiling because I was watching that you got a preview, and I'm watching all the amazing allies that we've all worked with so much uh, on the preview, and it's just like, God, I love these people. Yeah, thank, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, so a lot of people may not be aware, but when I started the show, I started off interviewing progressive candidates and activists, and it was actually uh, Laura from Red Berets, Hull, Washington. She was the first activist that came on. So she was the one that kind of woke me up to everything that they were trying to accomplish in Washington state. Uh, she told me about that documentary that uh, Kenny was working on at that time. So we'll get into that a little bit tonight. But I want to start off with this action that's happening this Sunday, because this is really important for people to see. I know a lot of the people that watch this show are in the New York area. So I want to share the flyer here. For people who are not aware, there is an event happening this Sunday uh, in New York. Now, this is April 9th. It's Easter Sunday. It's Fidelis Care Executive Office. That's 9525 Queens Boulevard from noon to 2 p.m. And Scott is here to talk a little bit about that. So, Scott, if you can take it away from here. Yes, actually, that, that's an old flyer. Um, that's an interesting story too behind that because, um, my wife and I had actually traveled three hours down to New York city to just like survey the spot because we didn't want to be show up and find out something like we did, um, which is last year they moved, (laughs) we showed up and you know, there was still some, uh, etched glass inside the building that had the Fidelis care logo. But um, apparently they sold the building and their new address. Uh, let me get the new flyer up. Um, that's the one I just shared on our tweet too. Um, is at 95 one sixty third Drive, but still in Rio Park. It's only a couple blocks away from there, like you know New York City blocks. That is. <laughs> but um, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so um, yeah, that um, fly, the new flyer is on your tweet that we just had out. And it's okay, also I got see. a bunch of new um, endorsement logos on there, too, which I'm very proud of. Um, I don't know if you can see the endorsement banner behind me. I saved room for one more because I'm pretty sure I could find one more endorser. But anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, let me turn around and face the camera again. Sorry. So That's okay. anyway, Let me the share reason the new... we're having this action. Oh, just per- so people perfect. can yes, see the new address. Yeah, so 9501 63rd so Drive, Rego Park, New York City, from noon to 12 p.m. Uh, and the goal is, is to pass this New York uh, Health Act, which I'm sure, as you know, Roger Meadows has talked about this. Uh, many, many, many times. Um, yes. And people really need to understand like how important something like this can be. From what I understand, there is support uh, for the New York Health Act. Yes. Um, last year, we actually had the majority support in both the Senate and the Assembly for the first time. Um, and rumor has it that two of the co-sponsors of the bill went to Andrea Cousins and said, do not call this for a vote which is why we didn't get it passed last year. So my point is we need to keep the pressure on all of the legislators, not just the ones that are saying I'm not for universal health care, but the ones that claim they are, they need to know we're watching them. They need to know that we hear them because they can't just be platitudes saying health care is a human right. And by the way, here's some insurance that denies that right for money. Right? Right. <laughs> That's so, right. That's um, yeah, that's that's well said, because I think people need to understand. Um, it's really interesting to me, because like I said, when we talked about this a couple months ago, there was support for it. And this is something that will happen. It, it's happened here in Massachusetts as well. The legislators will say, don't don't vote on it, even if there is the support for it. Right. So you have to put that pressure on someone like Andrea Cousins and other New York politicians there as well, especially like Scott said, the ones who are for Medicare for all and did run on it, uh, they should be pushing this as well. 
100%. And the reason I chose Easter Sunday is, and this is very difficult for me, and I knew it was going to be, just like I did last year, the same date. Um, Easter Sunday wasn't our target, but April 9th was. That is the, the same date that we lost Danny. So it will be his four-year anniversary in front of the ones that were responsible for denying him his medication. Right. And the action is called Fidelis Karen's Cura. The company that um, sold Danny his insurance policy was Fidelis Care. Fidelis is many knows is Latin for faithful. And it was founded by a father, Patrick Frawley, an ordained priest of the Brooklyn Catholic Diocese. Father Patrick Frawley then sold Fidelis Care to Centene for $3.8 billion, still wearing his collar as a priest. Now, I, I've always been a straight shooter and I don't want to be you know, a hypocrite and I will be straightforward. I'm not a religious person, but I was raised as a Southern Baptist and we were taught that Jesus healed the sick, right? And this is a priest out there wearing a collar selling health insurance to the poorest among us on Medicaid to in profiting by denying them that health care that they need to live. That's I mean, right. how more hypocrite? Wow, this is disgusting. A priest, and now after selling Sen, uh, Fidelis Care to Centene, he got the position of VP, get this title, Social Responsibilities, and gets paid $4.9 million a year to deny the poorest the Medicaid for the health care they need to live. You know, the New York Health Act is a single payer universal health care bill that is based on a progressive tax. Um, most people that would be um, making less than $150,000 are going to be paying less in their tax than they would be in premiums, co-pays, deductibles, so forth and so on. And they can make sure everybody in New York is covered. You know, they save money and they get covered. Unless they make more than $150,000 a year, then yes, their taxes will probably be more than they were paying in their premiums that they lost. Because you don't, won't be paying those premiums and that's why you'd be saving money. But I think those that can that make more than $150,000 a year can pay, I don't know what the amount is, but whatever, it's not huge to make sure every single person has the health care they need. You know? <clears throat> So the, what I was going was uh, the action is called Fidelis Karen's Cura. That's Latin for faithful lack of care. Now, I, you know, right. and, um, if the logo that we, we had up, these are the t-shirts that we made ourselves. That is Father Frawley. That skeleton hand, you might rec recognize that artwork. That was Danny's final payment. That's my artwork that I drew. And it yep. closely resembles the Fidelis Care logo. <clears throat> so what we're demanding on Easter Sunday is last year our demand for Father Farley was either step down from, you know, this legalized manslaughter for profit that he's doing or renounce your title of priest. This year on Easter Sunday, we are not giving him the luxury to deny his teachings. If he wants to wear that collar for every photo shoot, pretending he's taking care of the poor and making sure they have their health care, then he steps down and he joins our fight for real health care and support the New York Health Act, support whole Washington, support Cal Care, support Mass Care, support every single single payer bill out there, just like the Red Berets do. Because we are not going to win this fight just screaming for national care when we have politicians like uh, Kamala Harris, who shared Danny's story like a commercial for the ones who murdered him, for Joe Biden, who said he would veto Medicare for all. We're not getting it that way by screaming at these people because they're not listening to us. We're not going to stop screaming at them. No, hell no, they're not off the hook that easy. But we attack them from every single angle possible because sure as hell the insurance companies are doing that to us. Right. I hear you. I want to talk a little bit about the New York Health Act here for people who are not aware. 
So the New York Health Act, uh, more people need to talk about this. If you guys know people that are in, especially live in New York, uh, ping them. You should reach out to shows like Majority Report. They're in New York and ask them to talk about the New York Health Act. More people need to know about this. So it says health care for every New Yorker. And I want to mention this point uh, here. We applaud Governor Hochul's recognition of the ways in which New York health system has failed our state communities of color and her commitment to achieving greater health uh, equity. While recognition of the problem is an important step towards addressing it, the governor's state of the state address puts forth modest approaches when deep systemic change is needed to create the strongest possible system that guarantees high quality, equitable care for all, regardless of race, gender, employment, or citizenship status. And it goes on to talk about the pandemic, et cetera. And it says that the state legislator, leader Stuart Cousins, Speaker Heasty, and Governor Hochul must pass universal health care in 2022. This was the, uh, the ask last year. By prioritizing passing coverage for all, passing the end medical debt package of bills, passing the New York Health Act. And it says we must pass the New York Health for systemic and sustainable transformation of health care. Uh, as, as, you know, as Scott just told you, for people wondering, oh, I don't want to pay more taxes, that would only affect people who make over more than $150,000 a year. So you need to push back on that talking point. And another thing I want to show you as well, is here about uh, New York Health. Again, it says guaranteed health care for all New Yorkers, comprehensive coverage, all residents or full-time workers in the state, regardless of immigration status, will be covered for primary, preventative, and specialty care, hospitalization, mental health, substance abuse, uh, substance use treatment, reproductive health, dental, vision, hearing, long-term care, prescription drugs, medical supplies. Benefits will be more comprehensive than existing commercial health plans and all care related to the pandemic as well. Freedom to choose. Patients will choose their nurses and doctors. Fair funding. This plan will be funded through a graduated tax on income based on the ability to pay like a sliding scale that will be cheaper for at least 90% of New Yorkers. Equality of care. It is well documented that there are different standards of care based on the kind of insurance that you have. With the New York Health Act, everyone will be treated equally and covered with the same high quality plan, decreased administrative costs, and also reduced costs of drugs and devices. Direct negotiation with pharmaceutical companies and medical device makers will bring prices down by as much as 40%. So, Eric, if you can you put the link to this in the chat so that people can refer back to this site? Because this is important for people to really understand. Yes, we do need a uh, single payer for everybody in this country. We do need a Medicare for all. The problem is, is that nothing is happening on the national level in reference to the politicians that we have in DC. And in the meantime, there needs to be other efforts that are pushed on the local level. In fact, this is something that even Rokana attests to as well. You have to have the fight on the local level and on the national level in order to really like push those politicians in DC to make something happen here. So I want to get into this piece here about people who work in New York but don't live in New York because from what I understand, even people that may live in New Jersey but they work in New York, they would also qualify under the New York Health Act, correct? Correct, because of the fact that it's based on an income tax um, for New Yorkers. So if they're working in New Yorkers and they have to pay the taxes for New York, so therefore they have to be able to get the benefits that they're paying those taxes for taxation without representation, right? And furthermore, the, our biggest sticking point prior to us getting the um, majority support was we were getting a lot of pushback from unions. You know, they're like, well, we fought really hard for these crappy contracts that will deny us health care. Oh, that's not the way they said it. But <laughs> um, 
they, they really wanted, you know, the leaders were pushing back because the leaders, you know, it wasn't the members, you know, we explained to the leaders why it would be good for the members, but the leaders really have their, you know, boots on their members' throats with their, you know, universal or with their insurance. So what they just devised was um, they came up with a stipulation where if you are a union member, when you decide to move to Florida, when you retire, you can take the New York Health Act with you. So that should solve the problem with the unions. But, I you hope know, everyone again, heard I, that. I still think yeah, I hope everyone heard that because uh, I know a lot of you in New York and in Massachusetts as well, a lot of you like to move to Florida. So I hope you understand, like, that's, that's a big win if this is passed. Like, even for people who are at that age where maybe they, they're not at the retirement age just yet where they can qualify for Medicare, but they're at that age where like, maybe they retired from the military. You can retire from the military after 20 years. Maybe they've done that and they wanna to move to a place like Florida now. So now it's like, you can still take this healthcare act with you when you move to, to Florida. So I think that's a big plus. So we're talking about people that may live in New Jersey, people that may live in Connecticut, right? Uh, commuting to work in New York you would qualify under this act as well. Uh, now this Sunday, when this event takes place, anybody that's in that area, I see a shout out here from Roger Meadows. He said, thank you for this, uh, Roger. Scott, see you there Easter Sunday. So a lot of you, I know a lot of you were in like AOC's district or uh, Richie Torres district. I know a lot of you have gone to like protests and things like that. Please get the word out to people to join uh, Scott. I wish I could be there. I'm actually booked on Sunday, but to join because the more people you have, the better. Totally agree. Thank you so much. And um, the other thing I want to say is three of the members of the cast of Healing Us, myself being one of those, are going to be speaking at this event. We have got two of the Red Berets, one in Washington and one in California, actually two in Washington and one from California are flying in to support this action. Um, so yeah, we have supporters of CalCare and we have supporters of whole Washington supporting New York Health Act. This is the unity we need, you know, because again, not just the fact that, you know, the healthcare part of it, but on the financial aspect, if we get the New York Health Act passed, that is one state out of the 36 states that Centene has a foothold in that they lose. So one thirty-sixth of their profits round, you know, medium, but they're going to not take that hit, are they? They're going to raise their premiums and they're going to dump more money to fight back. That's going to make these other states look worse and they're going to get their, their universal health care passed. And that's what we need to do. We've got to hit them in their wallet and we got to make sure people understand the difference between health care and health insurance. Because again, right. it was pitched to Nixon as being a Ponzi scheme and every single administration knew it's a ponzi scheme they know that these insurance companies profit by denying not supplying care and they all say healthcare is a human right here's your contract that's right uh people need to understand too when i worked in healthcare i actually worked in the billing department and oftentimes i would see like these these claims come through and the insurance companies would deny based on the diagnosis so these were people that had insurance, FYI, not people who were not insured, but depending on the diagnosis, let's say it was for something like dementia. That was a big one. Blue Cross Blue Shield liked to deny dementia claims. So they would deny it based on the medical code and we would have to fight back and forth with the insurance companies to get them to pay what they're supposed to pay so that these patients don't have to pay for the services out of pocket. So it's not even just enough to have insurance what you really need is a, a single payer healthcare system that is going to cover these medical codes that some of these insurance companies likely deny, right? Now there is a documentary that is coming out. And I remember when uh, Kenny announced that he was working on this. I have a trailer here. It's called hearing us or he healing us, excuse me. And um, I want to go ahead and play this because I think that this is, Phenomenal. You're going to see uh, a couple of familiar faces, by the way, uh, in this documentary. So it says Healing Us 2023 movie, publishing our official teaser for Healing Us 
about the universal health care as a human right and American uh, policy. So I want to go ahead and play this trailer here. We are governed in American health care by the for-profit interests. In a typical year in modern America, approximately 68,000 people will die due to lack of adequate health care. Health insurance companies are in the business to make money and they will do whatever they can to avoid paying claims. The fallout is they would rather make a sale than take care of a patient. If me and Danny lived in Canada, if me and Danny lived in Mexico, me and Danny would still be living in Canada or Mexico. They're not just numbers, they're people. They're ripped from us because of our greedy healthcare system that puts profits before people. This is a profit-driven business. They can be sued if they are not acting in the best interest of their shareholders, not in the best interest of the patients. So the problem is greed. The Democrats and the Republicans are both in the pockets of Big Pharma and the insurance lobby. You're at a real tipping point. The people in this country know the system is broken. It's time for change. Yes, and that is uh, narrated by Susan Sarandon, who's also been a big uh, healthcare advocate in reference to uh, Medicare for all. I mean, we need all voices on this front. Uh, and I do feel like, and I don't know if you feel this way, Scott, but I do feel like since uh, Bernie's 2020 campaign, I feel like some people are not pushing this as much as they used to. And, and that's unfortunate. I don't think this should be attached to a campaign, but I do think those politicians that did run on Medicare for all, they need to be pressured to support something like the New York Health Act because Bernie Sanders said recently, like, we're not going to get Medicare for all, you know, national Medicare for all anytime soon because we don't have the votes, right? So those politicians, what I would say to people is to contact those people, especially if you're in their district, if you're in AOC's district, if you're in Richie Torres district, to contact those people and get them to support at least some of these local actions. But the idea of all of these organizations working together, so the New York Health Act, CalCare, MassCare, uh, whole Washington, that is the way to go, bringing all of these state actions together and, and make some more noise about this, I think. Yeah, because I'll tell you, Sabby, you know darn well, if you guys got something over there in Massachusetts, I'm just hopping the border, right? I mean, if I can fly over to collect signatures for Washington, you know, I can definitely cross the border and, you know, to grab signatures over in Massachusetts. And, you know, I know not everybody is as devoted as I am. I didn't get this devoted until I lost my kid. I'm hoping people can get involved before they have my incentive. You know, hoping I could win so they don't have my incentive. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. No, I, I, I hear you 100 percent. I hear you 100 um, percent. But for those of you like if you're if you can make it there, if you're in the area, please come out. Because, again, like we can't just sit around and, and hope for the best. Uh, on a national level, like, and everybody should be coming forward to put forth these type of efforts, like in their state, like we have to put the pressure on the politicians to give everybody health care. Um, it's crazy that in 2023, this is even still an issue. But that documentary points right to the problem, which is the fact that a lot of these politicians are in the back pocket of big pharma. So they're not willing to fight for something like a uh, single payer. And that's that's really where a lot of the problem uh, comes from. But I will tell all of you who are watching for some of these, these channels that are located in New York, contact them and ask them to talk about the New York Health Act. There's no excuse, I don't I, even live there. <laughs> okay? I, I, I will give AOC credit. She has endorsed the New York Health Act and um, whereas some of the others have shied away. I've also been able to speak to, um, oh my goodness, I can't even believe I'm not, I'm missing his name because he's one of my favorites. Uh, I'll come back to him. But AOC has endorsed um, the, the New York Health Act, but I did reach out to her camp or her office and ask if she would come out and speak or even speak to me about the action. And I was given, you know, she's not gonna sit with you right now. I was, no, no, we're not talking to you right now. <laughs> 
It, that wasn't it. I, I'm not giving the exact message, but that's what I heard. <laughs> Interesting, so because she, it's the weekend, and sh and she would be in New York because they go home on the weekend. Think. One would think, yeah, and it's not yeah. too far from her district. Did Richie Torres endorse this by chance? Um, no, I, I actually did not reach out to him myself. But I, I probably should have. I, I, again, I'm not a great organizer. I'm a good activist. <laughs> but, no, but no, he 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 knows about the New York Health Act. Uh, some of you that oh, are watching uh, live in Richie Torres district. You should contact him as well, um, because I, I will definitely been, reach out um, to him. Yeah, there have been some activists like Jose uh, and his friends. They have been uh, putting pressure on these politicians at these town hall meetings. So I think um, that's in reference to uh, the Ukraine war. But imagine if people did that in reference to health care. So that's what I'm saying. It doesn't have to be just one issue where you're putting pressure on the politicians. We need to start having people show up to these town halls to also put pressure on these politicians about health care. Because that's yeah, a big I mean, one. What yeah, one of the things that really burns me is um, my personal assembly rep. Um, her name is Carrie Warner. Um, she's heard Danny's story, and she is of the minority that does not support the New York Health Act in the assembly. And I've sat in multiple conversations with her, and she just refuses to budge. And then I find out that she had um, written a bill for uh, setting up teleservices during COVID, and also a business that profits from that teleservice bill that she wrote, which, you know, she might not get that if the insurance companies were not involved. Hmm. Yeah, exactly. I've asked Carrie Warner to be an ally, but she chose her side. And I continue to amplify that she refuses to support the New York Health Act and instead supports Danny's murderers. That's so unfortunate. Um, can we take those those comments on Rockfin, Eric? I think there's comments for you on there from Roger uh, Scott. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much for the tip, Roger. Senators Rivera, bill sponsor, Ramos, Adabo, Bailey, Brisport, Brooke, Comrie, Cooney, Deputy Majority, IDR, Gianaris, Gennardes, Hark, Ham, Hinchy, Holman, Jackson, Kavanaugh, Kennedy, Kruger, Lou, May, Mayor, Myrie Parker, Prasad, Salazar, Sanders, Sepulveda, Serrano, Stavinsky, Thomas have sponsored this bill. These people voted to increase their pay from $110,000 to $142,000. They can pass this. Mm. Roger, translation for Scott, the teacher's union leadership plus the union leadership of District Council 37, whose retirees just lost health care because Mayor Adams put them on Medicare Advantage, own stock and insurance and make banks selling to their members, gaslighting them into keep voting for them. Maybe DC 37, who now see what awaits them in retirement, will have a change of mind. Thank you, Roger. That's interesting. Interesting information yeah, there. Yeah, there was a lot going on with um, New York trying to force everybody onto um, these advantage programs. And luckily, there was a lot of pushback, a lot of people supporting, you know, the, the um, employees and they shot it down at the last minute. So thank you, everybody that supported, you know, people, not profits. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, well, uh Scott, really quick, because I don't want I want to make sure people get the right address. First and foremost, where can people follow you on social media? Because I know that you're posting this event uh, on Twitter, at least. Yeah, the, the two that I'm mostly amplifying from would be the two easiest to remember. That would be the Scott Desno, uh, S-C-O-T-T-D-E-S-N-O. -T -T -E and NY Red Berets, one word, both on Twitter. Okay. And if you go and on Facebook for the um, link for the uh, sign up page, it, you just the Dallas Karen's Cura. I'm pretty sure I'm the only one that has that title. OK, and I'll bring this up uh, one more time because I want want to make sure I gave people the right address here, for, especially for those of you that can make it this Sunday. Um, here we go. 
So just one more time, this is April 9th, Easter Sunday, Fidelis Care Regional Office, 9501 63rd Drive, uh, Rego Park, that is New York City, from noon to 2 p.m. If you can make it there, guys, uh, please try to make it out there. I think, is uh, Status Quo going to be there too, to cover it, I think? Jordan, Jordan, yes, Jordan has said he will be there to cover it for me. Love Jordy. He's been amazing and an amazing ally right from the very start. Actually, I think he was one of the first people that um, reached out to me for a podcast. Just really proud. I wanted to show this. You, I'm sure you've seen my flag a million times. This here, yep. the staff, this is Danny Steph that you always see in all the videos. It carries a New York Health Act flag when I'm not going on an airplane. For some reason, they won't let me carry a bow staff on the airport. <laughs> but this will be with us. <laughs> awesome. Scott, thank you so much. Uh, let me know how it goes. Like, like he said, I think a status quo is going to cover this on Sunday. So definitely check that out, but I'll be with you, with you guys there in spirit. I actually have, I have another thing on Sunday too. I need to make sure I put that on my calendar, but uh, definitely I'll be there in spirit and, and good luck and keep up the fight. And one last shout out, I'm sorry, real quick. Um, the very end of the month, the 29th and the 30th, I'll be at SUNY and Skidmore Colleges to host tables for the suicide prevention walks that they have with AFSP, American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Thank you again, Savvy, so much. You are welcome. Thank you, Scott. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.